In looking up UFOs, I ran across this one. It's called a real UFO. Depending on your perspective, this is either a German UFO, Nazi if you will, or it's going to be a UFO that Admiral Byrd came across when he was going over the uh, Antarctica region in the North Pole. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and break some of it down and see where we need to start at. The first thing that we need to know is the center here is not copper. That would be a bad choice for this. It would be aluminum. The outside there is a C shape or V shaped uh, transformer out there. And you can see that there are the transformer windings on the top and bottom. Probably unnecessary. Probably just need them in the center. But probably done to get a better uh, overall hit on uh, where the uh, eddy current's going to land. So let's go ahead and address the first thing. Magnets on this is going to be a bad idea. And the reason why is back EMF. We are not looking to get any retardation or anything that slows down the ability for this thing to rotate around. As you can see here, we have magnets here. We have coils in the center. And you can see that back EMF slowing it down and causing cogging in it. It's a bad idea for this. So let's take a look at what the proper choice is. This is why I say the inside has to be aluminum. This is uh, what eddy current can do with a simple transformer base under it. So let's identify the parts. The white disc right there is a piece of aluminum, has paint over it. The bottom part are coils, they're individual coils, and then there's a stack secondary coil. Just so we understand this, there's no iron core in this. This is pure coils doing this. That means it's a lot easier for us to build without making a big C-shaped uh, transformer or even a V-shaped transformer. We can just use the wires for this. As you can see here, we can still run the same disc on three coils. That's why it's very important we do it in our real craft in order to create the same effect. As you can clearly see, the speed itself is not an issue in getting the rotation. What we have to worry about is on the outside of the real craft, it creates a counter rotation, which means that the speed on the inside has to increase in order to incorporate the speed on the outside to be able to match it. Let's go ahead and take another look at the craft itself. So we understand the rotation we're going to get on the outside. We know what rotation we're going to get on the inside. Now we're not going to deal with the inner core of this right now. We're just going to put a shaft down the center. First thing is, let's get the eddy current flowing. Let's get the aluminum plates on the outside. Doesn't have to be solid aluminum out there on the uh, inner ring there. But it does have to be spaced out aluminum to get the counter rotation on it. So let's start with that and let's see if we can't get some counter rotation going. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make an STL file on Fusion 360. And then I'll go ahead and add some aluminum plates to it. And put some coils on the outside. I believe we can work with the counter rotation on that. If we get them both to spin at the same time, we're going to have to see what the speeds are on both. This project right here is an OTC X1. Otis T car is what the OTC sounds for. And basically what I wanted to show you on this is you're getting counter rotation based on eddy current. As you can see, we have big capacitor plates in there that are aluminum. Those are the big chunks you see there. The parts of aluminum that you see coming up right there that look like uh, round discs or something, those are utrons. People think those have a lot to do with this. It's the fact that they're aluminum. And in this case, you would have to take the physics principle of pure roll to understand why they're being used. But most people don't put springs on the top or bottom because they don't think that it calls for it. But you have to look at it as it's shoving it up, like going up a spiral staircase. So if you don't have springs up there, it can't pop up when the uh, transformer gets over it. And they can't come back down when it goes away from it. So you need that popping motion in order to get the thing to go upwards and thrust up. However, the only thing that we need to be concerned about on this to build the real craft is the actual counter rotation that he's getting. 
Now that we've seen some examples on how this is done, let's start discussing why it should be done. For those of you who know anything about rotation, if the disc rotates to the right, then the force is upward. If it rotates to the left, the force is downward. Based on how much rotation you're getting on each one, either your craft is directing upwards or downwards. We usually see this in the wheel in physics when you tie a string to it and it rotates around and it stays there. It's interesting to look at, but we have to apply it to this. We want the rotating discs to rotate away from each other or in different directions if you want to say that because we don't want the force to be on the center. The center shaft of this does not need the force. We need the force in between the two rotating discs. What that actually does is it makes us a net neutral in the center. That's what we're looking for. In order for it to sit in space and be equal to the rotational planet of the Earth, we need that actually to be equal or neutral, if you will. That way, we can apply a small amount of lift and get this thing to lift versus a tremendous amount of lift with one rotating disc. That's the principle behind it. That's what we need to start to look at when we look at this. The last part of this, for those who can understand this, you're going to want to create a Tesla turbine on the outside when you skin this thing. You want the center of it, the reason you want it neutral or equal, is the center of it has to be an air shaft. As this thing spin, spins, the air comes in on the outside of the craft, goes down the center, and creates your lifting force. That's how we're going to do it. But that part's for another video because the physics of it are going to be hard to pull off if we can't get the rotation first. I hope that this gives you a place to start, a place to understand why we need rotation and counter rotation. And it makes for the three ring effect. Outside rotation, middle rotation, and center neutral. That's exactly what everything in history tells you about a UFO. It's why we need to do it this way. This is the understanding of physics to get us there. I hope you can understand that. It's kind of hard without the visual at this point, and I could just show you the pictures of the real crafts that I've seen. However, or seen in YouTube or online, I should say, not in person. God knows I'd love to see one in person. However, with that being said, let's just go ahead and figure this out step by step. But our first step is counter-rotation. And let's go ahead and get this going with eddy current. And I think we're going to be okay. This is one of the projects I'm doing this year. And hopefully it turns out to be a really cool one and really gives us some good results. If not, it'll at least get us to the point where we understand more about it. Anyway, thank you for watching the video today, and if you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe. Thank you, and have a great day.